All right, more examples, more practice problems. Suppose that we invested $4,000 in account paying an annual percentage rate of 6%. A, if the account pays simple interest, so again, you have to use the simple interest formula sheet from the, uh, from the notes. What's the balance? So we're looking for future value, the future balance. Which remember, for simple interest, we don't have a formula for that, but what you do is you take your interest that you earn with simple interest, add to it the present value, and that will get you your future value. All right, so we have to find interest and then add it to our present value. <laughs> All right, so the interest for simple interest is the present value times our simple interest. So every year we earn 6% on $4,000. $4, and we do that 20 times over 20 years. So again, this is the amount we earn every year. This is how many years. So a total of, since it's a long time, we, we more than double $4,800 over the, that's the total interest. That's not the answer. The answer is then we take that interest, the 4,800, add it to the amount we invested and so our future value is 8,800 total. All right, so make sure you're careful, right? Make sure you know what you have to find. So a simple interest, we don't have a future value, we have an interest. Then you find your interest, add it to the amount you invest, and that's your future balance. So make sure you're careful with that. All right, the second part of this, suppose you, instead of simple interest, you're giving a compounded. So it's compounded monthly. What's the balance after 20 years? So what's the difference between, so, how does the compounding monthly affect me versus the simple interest? And this one's going to show you it actually has great effect. So monthly means 12 times a year. So I'm going to find my R first. So R 0 0.06 divided by 12. So R is 0 0.005. RT, remember, is not time. It's the number of times the money's reinvested. And so it's 12 times over 20 years. So it gets reinvested a bunch of times, 240 times total. So remember, we use the formula. So if you, you've got the formula on the formula sheet, use the principle 1 plus R raised to T. You have to remember what R and T are, or at least write them down, what they are. All right, so fill out the formula. Our future balance is our initial amount, which was our 4,000 times 1 plus R. So I'm just going to go ahead and add 1.005 raised to 240. That's how many times the money gets reinvested at that percentage rate, at the 0 .005. All right, so the future value should come out greater than 8,800, and it does. It actually comes out quite a bit greater. All right, it's $13,240.82. So compounding really makes a big difference. We earn almost 5,000 more, a little less than 5,000 more. All right, find the APY. Use the APY formula, which, again, is on your formula sheet. You use the APY formula on the formula sheet. You have to remember what N is. N is your compounding periods. All right, so find the APY for an account earning 6% interest compounded monthly. Round your answer as a percentage to two decimal places. So you have to write it as a percentage. Round it two decimal places. All right, APY is parentheses 1 plus our interest rate 0 0.06 over our compounding period, which is 12 raised to the 12, minus 1. Don't forget the minus 1. It's really easy. If I were to forget something, that's what I'd forget. All right, it comes out 0 0.0617, but that's not what they're looking for. They want it as a percentage to two decimal places. And so as a percentage, that's 6.17%. That's the answer that they're looking for, the 6.17%. All right, which means... The 0.17% comes from the compounding, right? It's 6% a year, but since we're compounding it, we get a little bit more than 6%. That little bit more is that 0.17. All right, you invest $1,900 at an account earning an APR of 3%. What's the value of the investment after three years if interest is compounded yearly? Round your answer to the nearest cent. So yearly means this is R, right? R is equal to the APR when it's yearly. So R is 0 0.03. T is equal to the number of years because N is 1. Um, three. So I was like, where's my time? Three years. Three. 
right, so again, future balance is our 1900 times 1.03 raised to the 3. Comes out $2,076.18. All right, well, what if instead of yearly compounding, we're compounded monthly? All right, so now R is taking that 3%, breaking it down every month. So we're going to take our percentage and break it down by a month. And so our point zero three divided by 12 is what our R is, which does come out point zero zero two five. T is our compounding period over a year, so 12 times over three years, so 36 times the money gets reinvested at that percentage. All right, future value. 1.0025 raised to the 36. Right. It doesn't change it a whole lot because, again, it's a short period of time. It's only three years. So even though we're compounding it over the months, you do get to earn a little bit more, but since it's such a small percentage that we're breaking down over such a small time period, it actually doesn't change it a whole lot. You only get a couple dollars more by doing that. But you do get more. All right, next example. All right, you invest $1,000 in an account that pays 3% interest compounded annually. What is the balance after two years? All right, so R, since it's annual, R is 0 0.03 because it would be divided by one. T is the number of years because it would be two times one. And so we're looking for the future valiance. We invest 1,000.03 raised to the two. And so we get just a little bit. Again, it shouldn't be a whole lot more. So we get about 60, almost $61 in interest. All right, suppose we invoice 2500 in an account that pays simple interest. As soon as we see simple interest, we use the simple interest formula, 2% each year, how much is the investment after the end of 10 years. All right, so again, we have to find a future value, which means we have to figure out the interest plus the present value, right? Interest is the formula we have for simple interest. So interest is our 2500 times the simple interest of 0.2. That's how much we earn each year, and we're going to earn 10 of those, right? That much over 10 years. And so, oh wait, we just want, we just want the interest. All right, we don't want the future value. How much interest is earned? So we just want interest. If we wanted future value, we would add that to the, the present value. We don't, we just want interest. And so the interest earned is 500. All right, so that's the answer they're looking for. If you wanted future value, you would take your 500 plus your 200, 2,500, so 3,000 is what you'd have at the future. Again, didn't ask for it, so that finishes up that example. All right, assume that an investment of 9,000 earns an APR of 6% compounded monthly, so 12, for 18 months. How much interest has been earned? Round your answer to the nearest cent. All right, so this one's a little tricky. Because they didn't give us years, they gave us months. We're compounded monthly. And so what this is, this is T. 18 months is how many months the money gets reinvested. So for a year and a half, right, 18 months is a year and a half, we break it down. And so that is what T is. T is our 18 months in this case. 18 months is the number of times the money is reinvested. So I don't have to figure out T. T is given to me. All right, every month for a year and a half, 18 months. R is our 0, 06 divided by our month's 12, so R is 0 0.005. We earn 0 0.005 for 18 months. All right, future value. How much, again, to figure out interest, we have to figure out future value and subtract away how much we invested, right? Because we don't have an interest formula for compounding formulas. So we have to invest 9,000 at 1 plus R, 0, 0, 005 raised to the 18, because that's how many months when our money was reinvested. 
So the future balance was $9,845.36. That's not the answer. The answer we have to figure out is we take our future value minus the present value. We take our amount invested and subtract it from the amount earned. The difference is the um, interest, right? Because you invested this amount, we have this amount at the end. The difference between how much you invested and how much you ended up with is your interest. So in this case, you take your 9,845, subtract away 9,000, so my interest is 845.36. So we earn a little over $845 in interest. All right, problem 10. Your friend tells you their savings account doubled in nine, your savings account doubled in nine years. Use the rule 72 to estimate the APR that our account was. So remember, the, the rule 42, uh, Well, it's not on your formula sheet, so you have to know this one. All right, so the rule 42, if you go back in your notes, was double time equals 72 over your APR. Remember, you leave APR as a percent. So your doubling time is nine years, so that goes in here for doubling time. 72 over your APR is what you're solving for. And so multiply this side by APR. APR. APR, so we get 9 times APR equals 72, divide by 9, divide by 9, APR is equal to 8, 8%, All right, 8% is your APR, that's the rule 72, so that one you have to look up in your notes. Alright, we'll stop there, we'll do the last example because it's a longer example in the next video.